What up, everybody? CJ Williams. Um, I this is this is a to me this is a big deal because um, somebody sent me a video. Um, I'm joined by Miss K. Blake. That's how we gonna start. Christina Blake. Yeah, that's how we gonna start. Somebody sent me a video, something I didn't see at first when it came out, but they sent it to me. And um, who just was to the tell person you that sent it? Who sent it to me? Was it was it, it was, like a creative or was it just like no, a random person? No, somebody. Pers so when she sent it to me. First of all, and tell, it was tell, a me, girl. tell everybody who, who you are. Let me tell, tell, tell us a little bit who, about you. Hey, y'all. My name's Christina. People call me Blake. The internet alias is K Blake. But I'm a content creator. I've been making wellness and fitness content for about five years. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I really just try my best to be authentic with my audience and showcase my life. I am vulnerable. I'm transparent. There's really nothing that I'm not willing to talk about, but I just want to showcase who I am as a creative and I'm living, I'm trusting God. I'm out here following my intuition and seeing where it takes me. Okay. So that's me. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. All right. You asked me to introduce <laughs> myself. Okay, good, great. I thought that so was pretty good. Recently you posted a video. That was good. That exactly. was good. That'll be, be a good reel. Nice little. Yeah. So recently you posted a video um, where you were uh, you were asking for donations. Yep. Um, and it was a large amount you were asking for. Mm-hmm. Big amount. You going like to tell them or should I? $30,000. $30,000. $30,000. Yeah. What did that number come from, first of all? So first and foremost, when I decided to ask, I wanted to ask for a number that would blow my mind, right? I didn't want to be like, can y'all send me $1,000, right? $1,000 can help me, but I wanted to think big. I wanted to use the opportunity to, to just pick a number that I would even be amazed by, like me, Charlotte, North Carolina, me. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I wanted a big number. I also knew I wanted a number that would allow me to pay off all of my past due bills, you know, I'm, I'm out here solo, dolo, not working. I got hella shit this past due. We cuss on this podcast. Listen, this ain't even, I don't even know what this is. We, this we cussing even, on this. We cuss, say okay, what word. You say. I have hella shit past due. You know, I have debt. Bills don't stop. Rent still expected to get paid. And for me, in my mind, believing that my community would pull up for me, I was just like, I want a number that I could pay off my, my rent for a few months. I could take care of some debt. I could literally get a fresh start. I could get the things that I need that's holding me back from being on this full-time content creator. And that number, I'll be honest with you, the figure of 30K, it kind of just kind of popped in my brain. But I also was like, I would be blown away if my community gave me that. And I have asked my community for money in the past. And it's not like I expected one person to give me a $30,000 donation. I know I have tons of followers, $10 here, $25 there, $100 here, $1,000 here, like that can add up. So in my mind, I was just like, if I get $30,000 from these people, like I can, I can take care of my debt. I can buy the equipment that I've been wanting and needing. And, and I've been telling myself, if you don't have it, that it's not really going to be to your standard. I can get the equipment. Like, I would have no reason to not go full force in this passion. And I also believe, like I believe in my community. So it was a random number, but it was a number that I felt that would blow my damn mind and would blow other people's mind hearing the testimony when it came. And it could still happen, you know what I'm saying? But that's where the figure came from. Great. <laughs> 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 Let me check one thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great for me. <laughs> mm. I, and I, I'm on liquid courage right now. I mean, I'm fully aware of what I'm saying, but like when you do stuff like this and you talking about things that are really, really personal, I ain't got no, I ain't got no time to be nervous about what I'm feeling. Like I just want to speak from the heart, and yeah. If you get you a liquor sponsor, then well, I'll say what I'm drinking. But you know, until then, liquid courage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. A woman sent it to you. Oh, it was a female. So what she said, she was like, "Look what you created. Look at this. 
And I said, and you so, created. So basically, basically, it's somebody who follow me based on the stuff we've done. In the oh, okay, past, okay, okay, okay. You know, which is good, yes. right? Because yes, I yes, want yes. people to see the content that I produce and follow the people that I that I put on. Like you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying that I showcase so good but she was like who she thinks she is like what is going on here and i was like i hadn't seen the video when she posted it and um so it was like <laughs> that video okay was five minutes too and uh, that she was long for social the person that sent it to me she's really but she was you know she was kind of she was kidding yeah she was, but kidding. She was like look at her like yeah so who who do you think you are like who the fuck you think you are Asking for thirty thousand for people, when hold up, when the unemployment rate is under three point five percent. What does that mean? Under three point five percent. That, that means, means there that are many jobs people? out oh. here. Mm -hmm. Why you think you can't go to work? Like what? What? What are you? Or is there just work that's just beneath you? So, I'll address the the job question, and then I will respond to the who the fuck I think I am, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, with reference to the job, when I got laid off for your audience, I have worked in finance, business operations, banking for almost 10 years. I've done everything from commercial underwriting to sales to customer service, leading, facilitating, like handling money, all things banking, right? And we live in a banking capital. Right. But with that said, when I got laid off, it really hurt me because I didn't see it coming. And prior to me being laid off, I was kind of getting to this point where I was over banking and finance because I'm a personality. Like I want to be around people. And when you're in banking, it's politics, it's policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. Like it's straight net, that's it's business, at its, it's business at its, at, that's attire. Pure, pure corporate. Like, you're wearing blazers yeah, and fucking... Yeah. 100 degree weather out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to park uptown and walk to the office. You sweating before you get to your desk because you in this damn blazer. So I I was tired of it. I was over, over it prior to me getting laid off. Even though I didn't see the layoff coming, it hurt me. So when I was thinking about, well, you have you have this time because there was a window in which I had money and I was applying for jobs, but like I also was kind of lackluster with my applications because I was like, I got enough money. I can pay my bills right now. I'm going to enjoy this time. I'm yeah. going to sleep in. I'm going to work out when I want to hang with my friends, go have lunch on a Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock. Like I took advantage of the time that I had. But while I was in that met that season, I was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Because you really don't want to do finance. Like you're passionate about content. Like, you love being around people. I mean, I hadn't even gotten to the point where I was like, well, maybe I could get into HR. But then I was applying for HR jobs and my, all my experience is finance. So I'm not getting no bites in HR. So from a job perspective, when you're trying to switch industries, it's already a challenge because you don't have any experience that lets the recruiters know you can do this. Mm -hmm. Now, you might have skill sets that can translate from industry to industry, mm -hmm. but it's hard for it's hard for a business operations person to say that they can handle, you know, the workload that a recruiter has, you know, it's, that's a hard sell. And while I do believe that I'm confident in my work abilities, like it's still a hard sell. So I was having, I was having a hard time switching industries. So I took up, I, I, there was a lot of time when I was like experimenting with applications and I wasn't getting no hits. I applied for hella jobs. I was also on unemployment and unemployment in North Carolina requires you to apply for jobs weekly and keep a record of it in case you get audited. And I got that damn Excel file on my computer right now. I send it over if they email me right now. So it was like I was applying for jobs, but I wasn't really getting hits in the in the different industries. So as time progressed and I'm like, OK, my money is dwindling down. I started looking more in finance because I'm like, OK, well, I could sell myself in this space. But everybody's looking for work like. To, the, to your point with the percentage of the unemployment, I'm sure there are jobs out here, but every a lot of people are looking for work. And when it comes down to it, if I'm applying for a credit analyst role, the last job I interviewed for that I thought I was going to get was for a credit analyst role. And I was hella prepared for that interview. But it's like, if 10 people are applying for that job, even if you do well, it's possible that somebody did better than you. You know what I'm saying? And they know somebody. Exactly. Or they could have somebody that they wanted to hire all along. It don't matter how yeah. good you did. Somebody, they, you, yeah. you just a formality to them, right. Right. you know? Right. Right. So right. in answering your question, I, I genuinely have been applying. I feel like I've been putting my best foot forward, but 
I also will say this, there, there are certain jobs that I haven't applied for that I'm not willing to do. Like at one point I was working at a restaurant part time, you know, and that served a purpose. But like, I recognized while I was in that role that like food service is not for me. I don't want to be a waiter. I, the uh, people that have worked in food service will all tell you that like the staffing and the customers, it's like, it's, it's, it's specific to that industry. And People are rude sometimes. Customers, a lot of customers don't, because I won't say all, but a lot of customers do not give a damn. Mm. If they come in for their reservation and their table is not ready, it's a problem. They don't want to wait. And if you have person after person after person like that, and, and I was a hostess at the restaurant I was working at, you got to deal with these people. You got to seat these people. And they're pissed. <laughs> You know, and I'm a very like I, I would classify myself as an empath, so I could pick up on energy. Right. So it's just like I did not like working at a restaurant. Like I didn't. So for me, it's just like there are certain jobs that I haven't applied for that I'm not willing to do because I am aware of what I what where my strengths lie, and what's going to work for me and what's not going to work for me. And also, like I said, there was a period in time when I was getting unemployment. So for in my mind, it's like if I'm getting a certain amount unemployment, I'm not finna go work at motherfucking Walmart. <laughs> I'm not finna do that. Now, unemployment runs out and I'm at the point now where I don't have no unemployment and I don't got no job and I could go and apply at Walmart, but I could also put energy into creating content. I could pull out a camera and take some pictures. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's just like if I'm going to grind, if like people have to grind regardless, if I'm going to grind, I'd rather grind for myself. That's cool. But in answering your question about who the fuck I think I am, because I want to answer that. that, Okay. That's what I was going at. I... I have been making content for five years, Mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying that it's been perfect the entire time. There have been plenty of ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this, I haven't made money in. But I know the DMs I've gotten. I know the tags I've gotten. I know people that I've met in Charlotte and in other cities. Hell, a few years ago, I went to damn Jamaica, and I met some people that follow me in Jamaica, Mm-hmm. On a damn resort, a husband and a wife. The wife followed me, but the husband was familiar because his wife was watching my content. Right. He's like, yo, she be watching you all the time. So in my mind, it's like, I have had these interactions. People have told me verbatim how I impact them, how I encourage them, how I keep them locked in to, you know, their creator. You know what I'm saying? Mine is Jesus, <laughs> but their creator. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's just like TikTok, tons of followers. Instagram. How many? How many? Right TikTok, now. TikTok, 90,000 followers. Mm, okay. Instagram, about 17,000. Mm-hmm. I got 8,000 on one. I got 6,000 on another. Mm-hmm. Separate pages. And I do not refurbish content. I mean, some things I do collaborations on where you'll, both audiences will see it at the same time. But I, I intentionally make sure I post different things on both pages because I want the audience that's paying attention to the, doc, the, the fitness and the workouts to get mm-hmm. that. And the people that are paying attention to me as a person, they want to see me work. worship. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but I enjoy it, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just like, I'm at a point where my money has run out. I'm putting my best foot forward on the apps. I'm not getting a hit. At this point, is it the Lord? Is it the Lord telling me? No. I, every job that you apply for, whether you are, you're qualified for it or not, you're not going to get it because you need to be focusing on making content. Okay. That's how I took it. So in my mind, I'm just like, okay, well, at this point, If I'm going to do this, I need to be able to pay my bills. I need to be able to have the equipment that I need. I can't be making videos on an old computer that's going to take forever to process. Uh, It's taking five hours to import on a a website. So to that point, while you're talking about that, there are some things you were saying you would do with that money. What what are some of those things? You were talking about a computer. You were talking about a camera. Yep, I want to, if if I were to get that money, whether it's 30,000 or a uh, enough to allow me to to afford the things that I want. I'm already established as a sole proprietor. I would like to establish an LLC, um, which is only 150. I know. I mean, I know. Okay. Right. <laughs> but still, that is something that I want to do. Okay. Okay. Right. That's still something I want to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways. Uh, but the big expenses, the big expenses. I want a new laptop. So a laptop. Mm-hmm. What, what, how much money does a laptop cost? The, the one, laptop that you want. What $1,500. Is, okay, that's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. Fifteen, sixteen hundred. dollars okay. Go on. What you else? Know, if, if, if you add on insurance and a, you know, a case and all that, it's probably $1,800. Okay. But, not yeah. too bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Vlogging camera, that's mm-hmm. eleven hundred. Like what kind of camera? Sony. Sony what? Uh, EV one. It's a vlogging camera. Okay. Mhm. I never heard of it. For somebody who has a few cameras, myself. It's would, a well. Would, you're not vlogging. Would, wouldn't recommend it. But go ahead. <laughs> you don't like? I've Con- never heard of like it. Sony. I love Sony. Oh. Matter of fact, if I could switch everything over to Sony, I would. But yeah. Sony is top. Well, when I when I did when I was doing research on vlogging cameras, that was like the most prominent one. Like I watched like three, four, five creators, and they all were talking about this specific camera and and specifically for vlogging. So like they they wouldn't. There's a couple of videos where you can like compare like different uh, brands, different yeah. vlogging styles, and they say if your primary focus is to vlog, like this is the camera for you because it has different specs you know, built-in filters and, like, but, uh, product, zoom in, like, yeah. automatically, all this but stuff. But you have a... F- what what kind of phone do you have? I have an iPhone. iPhone what? 10. Just upgrade your phone and use that. And buy a wireless mic. There is your vlogging camera right there. You don't need to spend money on equipment to do what it is you want to do. Playing devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go. Do you think... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hear you on the upgrade and I feel you because iPhones are like tip top. Like there are a lot of features on the new iPhones that I like I don't have cinematic mode, you know, that I don't have all these things that like the new iPhones have. But I also feel like I, I don't disagree with you. I do feel like I can make it happen with a phone. I genuinely can. But I also feel like I want to be able to sustain this like consistency is major with anything that you do not just content creation so for me it's just like while i know a phone will last if i have a camera allocated to vlogging for me it's like i can carry that thing for a few years Mm -hmm. before i have to upgrade before i have to think about it you know what i'm saying i'm already paying for an adobe membership i mean I have Adobe because when I used to take pictures, I had to purchase Adobe for Photoshop Mm -hmm. and I kept it up. So it's like, I still have an Adobe membership. I'm already paying for Premiere Pro, which is a video editing software. Which is what I use, yeah. Period. Yeah. So for me, it's just like, I just think the camera, you know, the camera will, will solidify the visualization. It's like, I'm a person that watches vlogs on YouTube. I love watching vlogs. Mm -hmm. I have certain creators that I enjoy to see and they have great, video quality so for me it's just like yeah i can do it on the phone but at this point i've waited this long to start vlogging i want i want my camera video quality to be really really good not to say that the iphone won't but that's a good point though quality and if i get 30k yeah i'm spending 11 1100 on a camera okay so what else (laughs) what are some other things you said you would do (laughs) laptop camera uh llc you said a vacation oh yeah i did say that i did say that i I didn't say vacation. I said book a trip different. But the reason I said that, the reason I said that was in correlation with the vlogging. Because for me, I'm a person that does genuinely like to travel. And prior to all this. most people. Yep. Prior to all this unemployment stuff, I would take myself on solo trips. I enjoy taking trips by myself. I'm an only child. Like, I, I really enjoy my one-on-one time and so I haven't experienced a solo trip in a minute and if I had the material to record it that's why I said I would book a trip because it's like I know my audience I know the things that they enjoy to a certain extent I mean I can't pinpoint everybody and what Mm -hmm. they enjoy but I know that they would enjoy to see that and if I had the equipment to do it I, and I love, I already love solo trips. So the thing is, I'm not pressed about getting on a plane by myself. I'm not pressed about checking into a hotel, doing things, you know, excursions, all those things. A lot of people out here don't really want to do. So I know my audience would eat that shit up, right? They would just eat it up. And then I'm also thinking just from a content perspective and like, not for nothing, what I see myself, like if all this stuff wasn't, wasn't a barrier for me. I feel like I would make money on sponsorships, you know, and like the goal is to get over on YouTube, get these vlogs, make this content, 
com mm -hmm. companies sponsor my videos. I'm already going to get paid on ads from YouTube anyway. But then on top of that, if I have my audience, even if a fraction of my audience converts, if I have 2,500 followers on YouTube and they're watching consistently and we're and they're engaging, it's going to keep growing. And I know I'm going to make good content because as a content creator, I know what I like to see. And what I post is what I like to see. And people that are following me enjoy what I like to see. So it's just like, in my mind, I'm like, I could book, I could book a little trip. I could go to goddamn Arizona. We can, we can go to the damn Red Rocks. I'm by myself. Y'all are going to watch it. I do that a couple of times. I'm bound to get a sponsorship. It's who, what kind of sponsorship? <laughs> so many, <laughs> like, <laughs> Really? Really? Is that what is that what it was giving? Um, I mean, it's so many sponsorships. Like, I mean, I do wellness workout. A, a brand could sponsor me in their workout clothing. You know, a, a agent, an agency that does travel mileage. Hell, a goddamn credit card. Like, I'm just throwing shit out here. But like, yeah. if I'm traveling, hotels, people could pay me to come to the hotels. I could stay in there for four days a week. Mm -hmm and document the hotel do some damn excursions that's, like that's, that's mental good. health too that's like i got good. people in the city that i i love having conversations like this anyway like you know what i'm saying like that's, we could generate conversation if if i got three people that like to travel and have a little flexibility i could get a plus one on a trip two people might be willing to buy their own airfare now we all in a city recording content mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like what? It's possible. The word content, what does it mean to you? Content, what is that? Content is like video form material. Mm -hmm. You know, like stuff that people are watching. Mm -hmm. But why content though? Uh, well, so for me as an only child, I, when I was coming up, I really didn't have like a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I, I would classify, huh? Why? I was a loner. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I just, I was a loner. Why? I, why was I a loner? Why? When I was younger, I kind of had, like, self-esteem issues. I didn't really think people liked me. Why? I don't know. Mm. I think you do. I don't know why people didn't like me. Yeah. Why do you think people didn't like you? I mean, I think people didn't like me because I, like, I wasn't really fucking with people like that. You know, like I was a loner, like I was accustomed to being by myself okay. when people would try to interact with me. I didn't really trust that what they were saying is was real. And so I just stayed alone and I self-soothed and I didn't really let a lot of people in. Like I've, I've kind of always been that way. But I now know at, in my adultness, like I know that that was that was insecurity. That was fear. That was like fear of rejection and like wanting to please people and not thinking that people would accept me as me. So I just would rather be by myself. Yeah. But all in all, as a result, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I, I, I kind of did my own thing, like high school, even like as a young adult, like 18, 19, 20, 21. Like, I mean, I met my ex, but like outside of that relationship, I really didn't have a lot of friends when I moved out here because I'm originally from California. So it was just like content was a way for me to communicate. Like, because I wasn't talking to people and like, even in the relationship that I was in, he wasn't even really a fan of social media. So like that whole time we were in a relationship, I would kind of like try to sneak and record or like do stuff that wasn't really messing up my home because he was, he had an issue with it. And you know, I was married, you know what I'm saying? Like I got married super young. So it was just like, I wanted to respect my home. I didn't want to just like do stuff that he wasn't really fucking mm -hmm. with. I wanted a peaceful house, you know, right. but it was just like, I always enjoyed talking to myself ultimately like it's i'm talking to myself so when i got out of the relationship and i was just kind of on my own it was just like okay you're in this room by yourself let's start talking you know what i'm saying and initially i looked at it as like a diary form but then i got accustomed to it and people started commenting and people started being like yo i feel you it was just like damn people are actually watching mm -hmm. and so i leaned more into it and here i am is there a a response, a comment, a DM that like really made you like, okay, I can do this. With the 30K remember, or just no, in general? No, just in general. Like from the time you've been doing this over the last few years, do you, is there something that you remember that made you say it? That, that, you know, cause I get, I, occasionally I get calls from people. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, I got a call from a guy who, uh, 
he had been seeing my stuff on TikTok, maybe YouTube. And I don't have a lot of followers anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. I got pff, none, um, virtually. And for the fact that a guy called me and said, hey, man, I like what you're doing. Like, that meant a lot to me. Like, okay, that gave me a little bit. That inspired me a little bit. Yeah. Is there something that happened to you over the last few years, something that you recall that kind of, like, pushed you? Um, I, I can't really identify one isolated conversation or comment, but I will say when I first started documenting my wellness journey, like that's how you and I first connected, mm -hmm. you know, before you were doing this, you had a gym yeah. and you know, I was really passionate about wellness because I had been so self-conscious for so long and I just wanted to be free mm -hmm. and I didn't want to hate my body. I didn't want to hate myself. So I started like, I literally was just like, this is it. Like something got to change. Like whatever I got to do, I'm willing to do it. I don't care what it is. I just want to feel better. Like, <clears throat> I don't care about, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't care about how I look and what I'm doing, what I'm wearing. I just want to feel better. So I'll be, you know, the wellness journey as a whole really made the difference for me because women and men were just telling me like, I appreciate how vulnerable you are like i mean i had moments where i had trainers and i was frustrated that they had me doing stuff and like i wasn't accustomed to doing it and i would go online and i'd be like hey yo like i'm a big girl i haven't i don't know about wellness and these people want me to cook five meals a day like they want me to eat five times like how i'm supposed to eat five times i don't even know about food and i'm like talking about these things online and everybody that is watching it and resonating with it, they're like, exactly, my nigga. <laughs> like, exactly. But like at the at the I, I have obviously grown and now I see why. But at the time, it's like I'm saying things that people people are thinking, but that they're not saying, whether it's to their friends, whether it's online on their own platforms. So hearing people say that I was making an impact for them really just helped me lean into it because in my mind I didn't have no judgment with what I was saying because I'm talking to myself like I need encouragement I want to keep pushing forward and a lot of the content that I make even now I'm genuinely talking to myself when I push the button but it's just like the way that I speak to myself like the 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 energy that I put into things people resonate with that so I mean once I found out that I was making an impact I didn't want to stop because yeah. it's like this you're making a difference like Back to that Jamaica couple, like, I was blown away. It was a damn resort in the middle of Jamaica. And that, this, that and this be, girl, that this would, girl yeah. is like, yo, you're Kay Blake. And that's why I specified earlier. Where like, was she from? Uh, I, I actually don't remember where she was from or where she where they lived. But she was like, yo, you're Kay Blake. And I always know if people know me from the Internet because they say Kay Blake. Because, like... If I'm just talking to people, I'll introduce myself as Blake. Very few people call me Christina. I, I don't really know why they fuck with Blake. But either way, when they when people say K Blake, I know that's the internet. So she's like, you're K Blake. And I'm like, bro, you follow me? <laughs> and she followed me on TikTok. So it's just like. That, that would do it for me too. Like that would. And, her, and for her husband to just be like, yo, she watches your stuff all the time. Like, keep doing your thing. Like. Once I knew I was making an impact, I was just like, I got to keep going. If, as long as I feel good about what I'm doing and I don't feel like I'm pushing the line for myself, why would I stop? Right. That's true. Let's get back to this video. Okay. Now, at this point. How you think, how you think this conversation going? Oh, this is, this is great. This yeah. Is this <laughs> I want to know, at, at this point, you know, you're, you're asking for the $30,000. Yep. So apparently you need money. You you want money. You need yes. money. Yes. Now, now one of the things you Lump said, one of the things you said, I think you said you've been on seven interviews. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. I do that in a week. Like, when I'm looking for a job, I do that in a week. Like, so this leads me to believe that you who's feel like. Going, who's been on seven interviews but if, in one if week? I'm, if I'm looking for a job, I'm going. Interviews? I'm going. I'm We're not talking about everywhere. apps. We're talking about interviews. I'm, I'm, I'm going in. You finna apply at McDonald's? So that leads me to my next question. Are there jobs that you just feel like are beneath you? Like you just want I wouldn't use do. the word beneath. I would use the word alignment. Like Okay. I I am I'm 36 years old. Like I and my age in hindsight doesn't mean anything, but I say it because I have a lot of life experience and I know what I could do 
and put my all into and what I couldn't do or not put my all into. But when you're trying to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. I still think a person should be calculated in the decisions that they make, even if they're desperate for money. But you're trying to pay your bills. So let me ask you this. Let me, I got a list of jobs here. Okay. <laughs> Tell me if you think these jobs are in alignment <laughs> <laughs> or something you not, would do. I don't think any job, I, like I just want to clarify, I don't think any job is beneath me. I just don't want to waste my time. I want to put my energy into things that I know will work for me. I have that awareness. But, but go ahead. But what is, none of that means anything if you don't have... Like, if you can't pay your bills. I mean, but guess what? I got laid off June 2023. It's now May, or I got June, I got laid off June 2022. It is now May 2023. I just got to the point where I'm desperate for cash. Okay. So right? you're desperate now. So. Here's some jobs. That's um, that's 11 months. That's 11 months. Let's God is see. good. That That's a blessing. Would you, would you be a cashier? Where? At like, you, oh, well, you mentioned Walmart. Walmart. I wouldn't apply Retail. for a cashier job, no. You wouldn't okay. You wouldn't mm -hmm. do that. Would you be a hotel housekeeper? No. Would you be the front work the front desk at a hotel? Yes. I you would. would do that. Have you applied for anything like that? No. Why not? <laughs> I just have Is it. Is it easier to just ask for money? I have it. I have it. I just have it. Okay. What about stocking shelves overnight? Nobody's in there. Nobody I would do sees that. You. you would do that. Mm -hmm. I, I applied for a couple retail jobs. So what happened? I mean, I didn't get hits. Okay. The, so I went to Lowe's. You know, I work, I full time, I do the video thing. Mm -hmm. But of course, I come up on <laughs> hard times. Housekeeper. I definitely wouldn't do no housekeeper. I come up on hard times, of course. I got a kid at home. I got a wifey. Mm -hmm. I got mortgage. So recently, and I only did it for a month before I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, Why did you say fuck this shit? Because I wanted, it was the hours. It was overnight. I, I went to Lowe's. I applied for Lowe's. I went. I got okay, the job so let me pretty ask. much on the spot. Mm -hmm. I went and did it for a few weeks. Stellar, outstanding employee. My of supervisor, course. supervisor fucking loved me. And I had, when I texted him to quit, he was like, would you try this? Whatever. It didn't, I was like, nah, I can't But you it. said it was the hours, right? It was the hours. Because I was leaving my family at home at night i got a kid i like okay. to put my kid to bed okay. i like to make when he wakes up he wakes up every freaking night in the middle of the night mm -hmm. i like to be there when he wakes up okay so question yeah you figure that out after you started working there if you right. had the awareness to know and i'm not saying you don't have the awareness but if prior to you knew like yo i enjoy my evenings with my family this doesn't work for me what's the purpose of it in applying but i also knew i had jobs coming up that were going to pay me some money Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, these jobs right here are getting me through. I mean, if God I tells me he'll provide for me. Okay, so that's that's what does it for you, huh? I mean, at the end of the day, do I need money? Yes. But I also have gone 11 months without working. And my rent is $2,000 and it's been paid. Hmm. Right? Now, again, I had money to cover my expenses for a period of time. But from December to May, I haven't had, like I got my, I, I left the restaurant. Well, I left the restaurant in March, but that was part time. That was like $500. For a week? No, like two the, weeks, a thousand dollars a month, like a thousand dollars a month. But it was just part time. So it was part time. It was, it was a few hours. It was like three, four hours a day. Oh. And I work like maybe four or five days a week, right? Oh. Anyways, a thousand dollars a month. Okay. That's reasonable. That's. I'm not saying it's not reasonable. I'm not saying it's not reasonable. Okay. But again, I would do it. Mental health. <laughs> mental health. Okay. Mental health. So